Hi, church and friends. Uh, some of you uh, are are not necessarily River Church members, but you, you join us for these devotions. We're glad you're here. Um, I just want to jump online and encourage you this evening, uh, Monday evening, May 11th, uh, and give you some thoughts that maybe will help you rest tonight as you, as you go to bed. Um, so, so thoughts from God's Word. Uh, as you know, I've been reading through the, the Bible this year, and so I've been in the book of Nehemiah, which is an awesome book. It's one of my favorite reads. Uh, and so that's been on my brain. But the other thing that's been on my brain has, has been the, the fact that we're, we're looking toward uh, restarting our public worship services at River Church. So you know, to those two things, you know, uh, Nehemiah, the, the book of Nehemiah, and then restarting our public worship services, like those two, among other things, those two things have been on my brain. Uh, I've been thinking a lot about that and like what I'm going to be preaching when we start up, uh, start up worship and, and what are we going to do, the details of it all. And so, it's, so, so anyway, out of that grows tonight's, uh, tonight's uh, devotion and tonight's thoughts from God's word. So here's what's going on in the book of Nehemiah. You may be familiar, familiar with the book, but the nation of Israel, has, they've, been, they've been held captive in a foreign land, Babylonian and Persia, and, and they've just been kicked around and they haven't, they haven't been home, they haven't been uh, in their temple or in their, their awesome city of Jerusalem for a long time. They've just been held captive. And now what's starting to happen is God is delivering them and he is, he is blessing the nation of Israel and he is, he is causing them, uh, uh, causing the foreign land to, to let them go so that they can go back to Jerusalem and they can rebuild the temple and rebuild the city walls and, and they can live in, in, live in peace once again. And, and so uh, under, under the leadership of Ezra, they had already returned and, and rebuilt the temple, that place where they worshiped the Lord. Uh, and, and, and then under, under Nehemiah, they had, they had returned and rebuilt the, the walls around the city of Jerusalem. So that once again, they could, they could worship like their forefathers, like their ancestors had. And so after years of being away from the temple and it falling into disrepair, now they're returning and rebuilding it rebuilding the city walls, and, and it's just a happy time for the people. And, and uh, earlier on in the book of Nehemiah, after the walls are completed, what begins to happen is uh, they decide as a people group, as, as, a, as a nation, that we should actually move back into the city. Uh, not live in the suburbs, but we should go move back into the city. And so they, they like draw names, and like 10% of them uh, are now committed because their names are drawn are now committed to moving back into the urban uh, areas of, of Jerusalem and, and re, uh, re-inhabiting the city and caring for the people of the city. And then, and then other people actually volunteer. They say, well, we want to go too. We want to move back into the city and care for the city. And rather than living in the suburbs, just outside of the city gates, we want to move into the city and live in that urban, urban environment and take care of the people and love the city well. Uh, and, and so that ensues. And it's just a, it's just a high... High watermark for them as as a, as a people, as they as, as a nation, as they worship, and so so what, it, what what then ensues is is like days and weeks and maybe even months of just of worship. Uh, choirs are singing and sacrifices are being made, and they would sit down on the grounds in the temple courts and they would read God's word for hours on end, and they would explain it to their children and. And the, the religious leaders would explain it to them, and, and there was repentance going on, and there were tears, and, and there was uh, there, there was just joy. It was just a joyful celebration, like 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 really like none other. Uh, and 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 then and then in in uh, chapter twelve of Nehemiah, it says this. It says um, when all this was going on, all this party was going on. It says many sacrifices were offered on that joyous day for God had given the people cause for great joy the women, the women and children also participated in the celebration and the joy of the people of Jerusalem could be heard far away let that sink in for a moment they they were worshiping there in the city surrounded by these new uh, walls and gates that they had that they had just built, and they were in the courtyard of this temple they had just rebuilt, and and, and they're worshiping uh, in such a joyful way that that the, the joy, the noise of their celebration could be heard outside of the city gates, into the suburbs, and 
and into the fields and, and people living around them that didn't even know of their God. Uh, these people that didn't worship the same God, they would hear, they would think, wow, the nation of Israel, they're, they're worshiping in such a way that we can hear the joy of their celebration. And I've just been thinking on, on, on how uh, exciting it's going to be in just a few short weeks when we get back together as a church. And oh, that, that, that our love for the city uh, might, might be deeper than it's ever been. And oh, that our joy um, in the Lord might be so loud and so clear that, that people around us might hear it in ways that maybe they haven't heard before. So I want to encourage you tonight with four thoughts, real briefly. The three, three things that I want you to be praying for. And then, and then one thing I want you to do, I encourage you, number one, as we get ready to come back into the city, you know, move back into the city, I ask that you would pray for the city. Pray for Brownsville like you never have before. Pray for yourself regarding the city, that God would give you a love for the city. And for our county, as we know, we, we, we touch more than just people in Brownsville, but, but pray for Brownsville. Pray that God would give you a heart for Brownsville. Pray for the businesses in Brownsville, that they would thrive. Pray that as we return to public worship, that, that we, would, we, would, we would cry out with the joy that, such that our city would hear us and they would want to experience that themselves. And pray for the surround, pray for Rancho Viejo and Los Fresnos and Almito and, and the other areas that we represent. Be praying for our city and praying that, 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 that God would give us a deeper love for our city than we've had in the past. Secondly, I encourage you to pray for the church, pray for River Church. Uh, pray for our ministries and pray for our relationships and pray for our finances and pray for our impact on the city and pray for the days to come that, that they would be our, our best days yet as a, as a church and pray for families and pray, pray much for River Church. Third, I invite you to pray for our leaders. Anybody at River Church that you would consider a leader and teacher and elder and pastors and just pray for the leaders that as we as we get ready to, to move back into public worship, that, that the Lord would give us strength and, and he would empower us to lead um, better than we've ever led in the past. And, and, and pray for our, um, that, that, that our best days are ahead as, as leaders. And then the fourth encouragement I have is that you would, you would check in with your neighbors, uh, your, your River Church neighbors, you know, the people that used to sit beside you in worship, the people that may be in your small group, the people that you've studied the Bible with before. Some of you have been doing an awesome job of checking in and attending our online Bible studies and attending our online worship service so, services. Some of you have been maybe away and we haven't heard much from you. So I encourage you to, now's a new, a, a new day. Today's a new day. Tomorrow's a new day. I encourage you to start checking in with one another. How you doing? Looking forward to seeing you a few weeks at, work, at, at River Church. You need anything? Are your needs met? We've been trying to do that as elders, but I encourage you to do that among yourselves as well. So those are my encouragements. Pray for the city and pray for the church and pray for your leaders and reach out to one another uh, in these coming days. Uh, I, I, I really do. I keep using this phrase, but I really do pray that, that our, our, our best days as a church are, are ahead of us and, 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 and that we are going to be more impactful in our city and our community than we have been in the past. That's my prayer. That's my heart. Um, so we're looking at May 31st as the re-entry date with some, uh, so definitely there'll be some, um, some, some measures that we will take to ensure safety, health safety, but, but May 31st is what we're looking at, and, and I'm excited. I'm excited to see you again, I'm excited to worship again. Uh, we are watching the numbers, we are watching the trends, we're not going to do anything that's unsafe or premature, but, but, but May 31st um, is the date that we're looking at, and, 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 and so I'm, I'm excited. Um, the Lord be with you tonight as you rest, uh, and may he encourage your soul, uh, and may you sleep well.